Drive, Indiana Avenue. The way it looks now. That was a very strong and thriving black business thoroughfare. You know, there were a lot of black owned businesses, black owned homes. Now there are, I dare say, none. Now, quote unquote 16 Tech area, which was once Bush Stadium, Riverside, you know, near downtown area. Now, for quite a while you know IEPUI has got a lot of investment and a lot of development in the area over the past you know, 50 years even from when my father who grew up in this area that's where Bush Stadium was now now there are apartments that you can't even probably afford to rent <laughs> but um, when my father grew up in the area, you know, it was a lot of differences. Now we just crossed 16th Street, which now once you cross 16th Street, when he grew up, you know, things changed as well. You know, and then black ownership in this area started to grow because when he was a child, it was no black ownership at all. It was all white families across 16th Street, and blacks were not allowed in this area at all. And it was a fight if they came over here, you know. Then it was, then it was opened up to black home, home ownership, and then almost, but all the white residents moved out as blacks were able to become homeowners in this area. And then there was some part of a thriving occurring but not not sustainably only lasted a generation a generation almost two but it only lasted a generation before systematically it was dismantled and destroyed and now is being gentrified as the black families die off because the black businesses have already died off the disinvestment has already occurred disinvestment has already occurred completely and totally You don't even really get into any kind of black business ownership until you get to Bursal. And then it's, 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 it's meager at best. It's very, very minimal. It's, and you can't, you know, you can't invest in the, in the businesses. And so you just have, at best, small, just barely struggling little marts that have no significant revenue stream to grow, scale at all. This is the bottoms. This was a lot of black owned businesses even when I was a child. 
and no longer here. This is a continuous process. This I'm you know, I don't make this stuff up. I don't make this stuff up. You know, it is very it's not it's not just unfortunate. It, no. Here it, it would be unfortunate if it wasn't intentional. Okay? It would be unfortunate if it was just happenstance, just like un, a series of un, unfortunate circumstances. Now, mind you, this is an opportunity zone area. And so you see those who are thriving in this opportunity zone, you know, that are able to take advantage of the of the of the the tax abatements and the, and the tax benefits in this opportunity zone and they are not black businesses at all at all at all at all not any not any no black businesses at all barely just barely hanging on I mean these were thriving back black businesses that I'm, that I'm pointing out at, at, you know they were thriving, you know, and it was, they weren't, and weren't able to sustain, you know, they weren't able to sustain, you know, they didn't have the capital, they didn't have the legacy to sustain. Why? Because the neighborhoods, you know, the property ownership shifted, you know, people died, the houses went to the banks, the families weren't able to keep them and upkeep them, and so they went to the banks. So the, the equity was lost. Equity was lost. No equity, no no money to invest or to reinvest or to maintain or to upkeep, so on and so forth. You know, these things that I'm saying are not are not made up. They're not artificial. They're 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 real and true you know even even in my 36 years in Indianapolis I've experienced the whole path I just drove that I'm driving right now I've experienced thriving thriving home ownership in the area thriving businesses in the area at the level that they could you know that were supported by the area and the neighborhood and so forth but enough to sustain you know enough for a livelihood enough for the business owners to ink out a livelihood to own to own their business and you know and their home and provide for their house you know enough to enough enough to sustain themselves but not not an ecosystem now, as I move over towards Crown Hill and Golden Hills area, these are real things and that's on my mind, and I'm thinking about as I'm working to grow, you know, my business, food by the word here in Indianapolis. You know, it's very interesting and intriguing to me. You know, knowing the history of Indianapolis, knowing the history of of black Americans in Indiana and in the state of Indiana and in Indianapolis, you know, that I learned from my father and everything, and then I, you know, study from the readings that, you know, even the book that he's written and from the other things that I've absorbed over the years and the documentaries and you know, things that I've read, you know, to bring us to 2020, you know, and there are currently 243,000 or so um, black residents in the city of Indianapolis. Yet, you know, our access to capital has never, I mean, probably never been as hard, you know, to, come, to, to even access here in Indianapolis to even build and help grow businesses. And, you know, especially at a time now that we're really, you know, 
know, everybody's focused on their businesses and growing their business and adding value and, you know, being able to invest in their businesses and so forth. But, you know, we moved here 36 years ago in 1984, and uh, the environment was definitely different. You know, my father was born here in 1937, and even coming back in 1984, it was extremely different from what he would remembered. Um, he'd seen it, he'd seen a lot come and go. But the sustainability factor for, for black business is definitely, and it's, and it's, it's like this around the country, but I'm just focused on Indianapolis right now. The, the complication of starting, running, and owning, and operating a black business in Indianapolis, you know, is only exacerbated by the lack of capital. That's just the bottom line. The lack, you know, and you know, you know. And, you know, the book, The Color of Money, really lays out the reasons why, you know, access to um, capital in the black community in, in America has, you know, intentionally been, been kept from us. This long, long, short in the story. And now as I look, you know, at Indianapolis and drive around and, you know, see different things and see how we struggle to... You know start operate and grow businesses and this is even pre-covid you know this is pre-covid i mean i mean covid is only you know only showing and demonstrating some things but the overall issues were already here and they were already extremely prevalent and as i go around though and i see you know best intention businesses you know that are here to help breathe healthy lifestyle choices and support healthy lifestyle choices in our communities are nearly impossible to get off the ground nearly impossible because we don't have the funding you know and I look back into my own experiences you know in my early days you know you know managing someone else's business and I look at the you know the, the, the particular brands and so forth and I remember back you know I go back 25 years ago in my mind, and I remember, you know, how did I become aware of certain businesses and so forth? You know, well, you know, we got something in the mail, a pretty picture, and it attracted me to that business and so on and so forth. And, and I, you know, called that business and, you know, and partook of that business and became a loyal customer of that business. And then, then subsequently loved that business so much that I got involved in that business and went to work for that business in that order now how you know and that's me you know you know, multiply that by however many you know and that brand is still functional and it's still you know with all the ups and downs of you know massive you know you know I mean massive governmental you know upheavals since then you know through the dot com you know bus through you know the great recession and now in the COVID you know you know companies still you know still operating and functioning and you know and and able to sustain but anyway what I use that as an example though of you know as, as a black business owner how we do not have access to that sort of leverage we do not have access to the capital that it takes in order to advertise like that we don't have the access to the capital in order to do that to grow our businesses and that's the and that's the the overall issue you know we don't have the access to do you know you know to, to, to focus on an area and do a do a mail drop to 28,000 you know households you know with with you know unknowable you know returns you know for a dynamic you know mail drop you know of a nice maybe you know just a little you know postcard size you know um, um, ad advertisement that that really catches people's attention we don't have the money for that you know it's effective but we don't have the money for it we don't have the money for and we don't have the property that we once had 
but we don't have the money and the property to advertise the way that we need to. We don't have to, to gain the local awareness. You know, now we do have social media, thank God, but even even still, because I utilize social media quite a bit, but we don't have the money to do the amount of advertising, even even the social media dollars, um, advertising dollars that, that we need in order to grow our businesses. Now I say all this, you know, you know, because we are up against machines that are, you know, exponentially larger than us on top of the disadvantages that are built into our, you know, um, system, our, our systemic, um, systemically racist system, you know, that are built in, you know, with the intentionality of keeping us suppressed um, as, a, as, a, as a people. And those issues, these issues are real. And so, I mean, even today in 2020, in October of 2020, you know, I'm out here right now on the road looking at, you know, just, you know, looking around in Annapolis as I'm trying to, you know, work to grow, you know, food by the word. And, and I see, you know, I see where we once were and I see where we could not hold on to, you know, for a multiplicity of, of, of reasons. But yet I still see growth. I see a lot of growth. I still see a lot of investment. I still see a lot of things being done. I still see this 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 genesis occurring here in town. But what I don't see is us involved in it. What I don't see, you know, I mean, if you were if you were if you were an out of towner and you just came into Indianapolis right now and you drove around for an hour or two, you would be under the presumption that there's not a lot of black businesses here in Indianapolis, just off of what you see, you know, based upon the optics, when the reality of it is, is we're here, but we don't have the affordability to be visible, or as visible as we need to be, you know, to compete, you know, on, 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 on the, the necessary average level that we need to compete on. So when I think about all of this and put it together and contextualize, you know, what we need to do here in Indianapolis. You know, you know, you get a you get a strange and, and suspicious feeling like Indianapolis doesn't like black people. And I mean I'm more optimistic than that, you know, praise God, that um, you know, not that Indianapolis doesn't like black people, but it's still not favorable for black people. It's not favorable for black businesses. And it has not been for quite a long time. You know, since since, you know, most black businesses were were regulated, legislated, and terrorized out of existence in Indianapolis. These are just facts. You know, these are just facts. You know, when you look through the history of Indianapolis, at one point there were more sections. There was a there was a there was a culture, there was a theme, there were, you know, it was it was noticeably, you know, um, you know, a higher level of black engagement in the economy in Indianapolis. And that has been systematically drummed out, mainly and mostly. And so I say all that as as I work to grow food by the word. You know, it's, it's you know where to get the footing, where to you know where to, you know where's the niche. You know, who's the niche audience? You know, who 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 do you know? Who do you who do you see as your 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 market? You know, where's your market at? Well, you know. One thing for sure, over the last four years, I've I've realized a lot when it comes to Indianapolis and when it comes to, you know, being a, a black man and a black business owner in Indianapolis, you know, there 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 are a lot of things that are levied against us. But the reality of it is, is praise be to God, you know, that we have a, you know, through social media, you know, I'm able to get, you know, messages out, you know, and to you know, speak to people that I normally wouldn't be able to come in contact with. So that is a blessing. You know, God is making the ways, you know, he's making the ways, you know, where man have blocked the ways, you know, and, and, you know, and continue to block. And the one thing that 2020 is revealing is that a lot of people, a lot of people are feeling the press, you know, and they're, they're getting anxious. And so they're, you know, there are coalitions that are, you know, strengthening and developing, you know, from a business stand, from business standpoints, to you know, continue to um, insulate you know a lot of folks, 
And, you know, as far as, you know, you know, the black community in Indianapolis, you know, these coalitions are extremely underfunded and they're, they're very few and they're, they're, you know, we're lacking a voice. We're extremely lacking voice. You know, we need voice. We need strong voice. We don't need just opinionated, you know, um, um, you know, walking around, you know, just giving, you know, you know, I think this and I think that's no, we need application. We need active participation. You know, we need, you know, to, you know, lower our noses a bit and, 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 and not aspire to, you know, for, you know, to be, you know, amongst those that are, that walk in hubris, you know, we need to, you know, we need to walk in humility as God has called us to, but we also need to walk, you know, in with the intelligence that he's, he's, he's bestowed upon us and, and, and with the strength, you know, in our backbone that, you know, we're walking in his favor. That's what we have to do. We cannot, you know, just acquiesce to what's been done and what's normal. But let me even touch on that a little bit. You know, everybody's interested in getting back to the, you know, normal. But here's the thing. And I'm going to be honest. I Normal was never good for black America. Normal was never good for me. You know, I am very not interested in normal. Um, normal is a, is not a good place. You know, if you're out here walking out your faith and trying to grow and, and build legacy for your family, especially in the black community, normal is a very bad place to be. Matter of fact, we need to never go back to normal again, and we need to make sure we go forward, you know, in the Lord and really go towards, you know, what he's planned for us and not what man has made for us. So I'm not interested in normal. And normal is a, Normal is a very dangerous place for us right now. If we go to normal, if we're striving for normal, we are striving towards dangerous waters. Instead of swimming toward the shore, we're swimming further out into the ocean and expecting and expecting the results of the safety and security of the shore. So, you know, it's not about a return to normal, you know, and we have to make sure that we understand and this is where we have to educate ourselves to what was normal. You know, normal is very bad for a lot of people. You know, for a lot of people, the numbers of people that were leaving Indianapolis was was very high over the past several years. Only over the past you know couple of years have people started to return, and newer people are starting to come in in Indianapolis, which is a good thing. But we have to look at you know culture. We have to look at we have to look at the fact that you know it has to be a safe dwelling. You know, Indianapolis is not a safe place for a black man. It's not. It's not safe. It's not. It's not healthy for a black man. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not a menial for, for, for black people, black men and women. It's, it's not, it's not, you know, from a business level, from, you know, from, from, from a health and wellness level. It's not, you know, it's not. And like I say, the same could be said for every major metropolitan city in the country, but I'm just focused on Indianapolis. But that's my little you know, two cents on that. Um, I just really want to, you know, we got to keep on top of mind that, being a black business owner in Indianapolis is, is more of a struggle because we have systemically built in throughout our entire economic system oppressive um, oppressive um, regulations rules you know what you know what you know what have you that systematically keep us from access to capital and which you know keep us in a position of being extremely underfunded extremely underfunded you cannot have and or grow a business without funding I don't care how great the idea is I don't care how awesome the food is I don't care how awesome the product is if you do not have money to invest and grow your business your business cannot grow and your business cannot thrive I don't care how awesome the concept is so and this is this is the issue that we're faced with you know, this is the issue that we're faced with. You know, I know those that even have the attention and awareness and can't grow their business. Because why? Because they don't have the money to inject into it and to properly and healthily grow that business, you know, sustainably and, and to do the things that they need to do to get a brick and mortar or to, you know, to build a system, to build, you know, to, to you know, build that conduit, you know, that sustainable conduit that attracts people, you know, that attracts people, you know, so... Just um, a little something um, off the top of my head. God bless you. I'll talk to you later.